the CSS accent color property just became stable across all modern web engines. In one line of CSS, accent color enables the browser to do the work of determining the foreground color against your set background, and also works alongside the color scheme property to provide some nice automatic adjustments for light and dark themes. Another piece of out-of-the-box functionality that recently landed across browsers is the HTML dialog element. This lets you create a dialog box such as an alert or a prompt. Back in the world of recently cross-browser features is DateTime Local. It's an input type, so you use it like this. And it gives you an input where the user can select both the date and the time. This is how it looks on desktop Chrome and Chrome on Android. A site's CSS often ends up being a combination of resets, utility classes, components, libraries, and sometimes you can find yourself adding to selectors just to beat the specificity of another rule. Cascade Layers solved this. Look at that. This feature wasn't there at all last year, and now it's everywhere. One improvement here is the Back Forward Page Cache, or BF Cache for short. Now, this is a feature that was late to Chromium. It's been in Firefox and Safari for a number of years, a, a big number. But it's in Chromium now, too. We have mentioned the benefits of lazy loading before on the stage, but now it's available across browsers, arriving in Safari 15.4, and we've continued working with our CMS partners, so it's now available in WordPress, Wix, Silverstripe, Drupal, and others. Before we close out this section, we want to call out a new performance metric that we've been experimenting with. We're calling it Interaction to Next Paint, and it considers not just the first interaction, but all interactions on a page. Check it out and let us know what you think. What if there was a way to preserve the helpful part of cookies but remove the cross-site tracking part? If you rely on cross-site cookies and want to make sure things will keep working smoothly, check out the CHIPS origin trial, which is available now. The next experiment is the Topics API. It gives the page a few topics the browser believes the user is interested in, which can be used to figure out the best ad to show. See the description for links to content that goes into more detail here, particularly how the anti-fingerprinting measures work. This is an origin trial right now, and again, we're really interested in feedback. In terms of new stuff, we're working on passkeys in WebAuthn, developed as part of the FIDO Alliance. This will allow registered credentials to be synchronized across Android devices, so you don't always need to enter a password. And to sign in across devices, you can use your phone as a security key by scanning a QR code. Another input type that's been historically difficult to access is the eyedropper for selecting color values. Well, it's a lot easier now, thanks to the conveniently named eyedropper API. This is in Chromium, but only on desktop, as it's a fairly specific desktop interaction. Speaking of input, let's talk about virtual keyboards. With the Virtual Keyboard API, users can programmatically access a virtual keyboard from JavaScript, pass information about the keyboard into CSS through environment variables, and style it, and provide a policy to determine if the virtual keyboard should be shown. Thanks to Microsoft, you can explore this in Chromium, but it isn't quite ready for widespread use yet. Let's talk about the Web Codex API. This is actually a whole suite of APIs that give you low-level control of image and video decoding and image encoding. From pulling the frames out of an animated GIF to encoding a WebGL-generated scene to an H.264 video all within the browser. It's something that Chromium is leading with, but we're looking forward to more cross-engine support in the future. The window controls overlay is a Chromium only feature right now, but it's a nice bit of progressive enhancement for installed apps. The navigation API. This gives you the current Windows view of same origin session history and lets you intercept navigations, meaning you don't need to rely on click events on the links. It's in an origin trial in Chrome right now, headed for stable pretty soon. Another feature we've been looking at in the world of navigations is one that developers, including me, have been requesting for ages. But it's trickier than it sounds, so it's eluded us for years. It's the Page Transition API, an API to simplify creating rich animated transitions between pages and page states using familiar concepts like CSS animations. If you want to drill down further, you can use the new Performance Insights panel to do so. The Performance Insights panel is experimental. It is an experiment to provide a more actionable and use case-driven performance analysis experience. Please go to goo.girl slash devtools performance to learn more about the panel. 
As a developer or a tester, we want to make sure our users can complete their tasks successfully. This is what the recorder panel is for, a tool to help you record, replay, and measure your user flow. We launched this feature last year as a developer preview. And since then, your feedback is overwhelming. We've been meeting and working across browser vendors to make sure your web development experience is even better through an initiative called Interop 2022. For 2022, we aim to focus on these 15 key areas to ensure that behavior is fully interoperable between browsers. Then, in 2023, we'll work on another set, influenced by feedback from you. There is so much innovation to come, and it's a really exciting time to be a web developer.